What is it that makes powerful synth bass? This video will cover a variety of perspectives on timbre that will help you with the following areas. Synthesis, sound design, EQ techniques and mixing. Because bass is already indicative of a low frequency, typically between 60 and 250 hertz, the question is really about the timbre of the bass. Firstly, the timbre can be looked at in two ways, the general frequency curve and the finer tonality. This video is now playing a low bass frequency of 70 hertz. It is loud enough, so if you cannot hear it in this moment, then my first suggestion is to put on some good headphones. But either way, let's mix in one harmonic after another and see how much this bass wave can be built up. As we flatten the spectrum, the bass is thinned out. Because while the bass is still the fundamental frequency, this flattening gradually overrides the main timbre, and even 95% of the wave shape has thinned out as well. Compared to the sine wave, the fundamental is compensated to 50 dB lower than previously, compared to only 5 dB lower with the standard saw wave. We are left with the question of quality. How bright can this 70 Hz fundamental be made? The sweet spot is about here at the 6 dB slope. There's your legendary saw shape. Now with the aid of high frequencies, our perception of sound can astonishingly hear the fundamental. We do not think we're listening to hundreds of individual notes. When these frequencies are more isolated or filtered, the apparent pitch is known as a phantom fundamental. If I play this full sound on my laptop speakers, or even cheaper earphones, I can hear it clearly because of the phantom fundamental phenomenon, also known as residue perception. The ear can still perceive the fundamental frequency, even though my laptop speakers can't reproduce it. What is the real lowest frequency we can hear? It is only roughly the third harmonic. Yes, this wide spectrum slope will create the illusion of close to two octaves lower than the actual sound pressure. With the higher frequencies adding presence, it now comes to a question of how much presence is needed. Now you can understand why using powerful, fat synth sound is difficult to mix into a busy song. If the overall sound is so full and present, then there tends to be less need or less energy available for more instrumentation. When it comes to the finer timbre of the bass, there are really endless sound design possibilities from layering. In synthesis, the harmonics of a bass sound may fill the entire spectrum. And with unique wavetables, we can create full bass sounds like those heard in drum and bass, dubstep, EDM, and other electronic genres. Now, let's take a closer look at the subharmonic aspect. In all cases, adding a sub oscillator will thicken the sound. This is normally achieved when adding a plus minus 12 semitones to a sound. Wave's Max Bass plugin, as well as in my case Logic Pro's Sub Bass plugin, have two filters for high and low parts of the spectrum, which can be balanced together. 
In this example with a sine wave, you can hear how mixing both low frequency harmonics and high harmonics adds presence to the signal. But the presence is related to the subharmonic wave. The famous style of synth bass to look at is called the Reese bass. Thanks to Guidance by Fox and Seamless R for their excellent tutorials on this. And obviously all you got to do is increase, increase the... Seamless's tutorial is a more hardcore so, example here. That same thing. Let's turn off the FM here and go to RM and do the same thing. You even see it happen in the EQ. When Seamless uses the notch, it is wide enough so we can hear the bass harmonics and not too short that the harmonics start to whistle. Here is my Reese impression with Absinthe. You can see clearly the strong detuning that creates a wobble. The wobble can present a visceral sub bass perception when played with a good sound system. The strong detuning of the oscillators offers a new sub frequency perception. With this Reese bass, the second oscillator is just one and a half semitones out, which at C3 of around 130 Hz, the bass sub is 10.5. At C2, it is 5.25. And the low bass at C1, it is only 2 Hz. These are perceivable beating bass and sub bass frequencies. The creation of beating in the low frequencies has a powerful effect, similar to using bass in short impulses rather than sustained notes. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Feel free to like and leave a comment, subscribe if you're new, and thanks for watching.